This conference will now be recorded. Good afternoon. Uh, it's Tuesday, October 18th, 2022. This is the regular October meeting of the Davenport Public Library and Board of Trustees. We're meeting in the in the meeting room C of the library in Maine. My name is Steve Emman, president of the Board of Trustees, and I'd like to call this meeting to order. First item on the agenda is roll call and introduction of attendees. Call the roll. Malavika Shukande. Present. Judy Lance. Here. Yeah. Joe Heinrichs. Here. Craig Cooper. Here. And myself, Steve Emig. <clears throat> Excuse me, we have a quorum and, oh, Sylvia. Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're still expecting um, Amanda Motto and Laura Dennis and Tom Engelman. Uh, but they have not arrived yet. Also uh, with us today is uh, Jeff Collins, a library director, Lexi Riley, assistant library director, Jennifer Williams, HR operations manager, Tracy Moore, development officer, um, Emily Simpao, uh, youth services supervisor, um, Jerry Scalak, president. Um, Marion McGinnis, our city council liaison, and Casey Shipley, recorder. Anyone else? Nope. Good morning. Okay. Um, introduction. Okay, got that. <clears throat> Moving along, the next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Move to approve. Okay. Seconded. Okay, Steve. thank you. So I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Seeing and hearing none, I'll call for the vote. Malavika? Yes. Sylvia? Yes. Thank you. Judy? Yes. Joe? Yes. Craig? Yes. And my own vote is yes. The motion carries. Next item on the agenda is public with comment. Seeing no one, we'll move along. Next item on the agenda is reports and communications. First item there is the Friends. Gary, oh, are you up to date on what the Friends have been doing? Well, I've got several items to report. I haven't been here for a little while, and I appreciate the opportunity to report out. Uh, first thing I'd like to just note is we do have Art Cullen speaking tomorrow at the library here. In the afternoon at 2 o'clock, Art is a, uh, both a uh, prize-winning uh, journalist, so I uh, hope folks will show up for that. And, uh, then he's speaking tomorrow evening also at the Upper Mississippi River Conference, which is a, is a river action item. Uh, we're trying to, I believe we're taking advantage of leveraging his coming to that conference to speak at the library. I've been trying to push this a little bit for the friends, maybe find more of those sorts of opportunities where we can kind of cost share things rather than just uh, work independently. So so Art will be here, and I'm sure it will be very interesting to hear his speak. Two, two, two o'clock in the uh, conference room. Yeah. 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 Big one. So uh, looking forward to that. Okay, if I could, Jerry, I just wanted to interrupt to say that Jerry mentioned uh, Mr. Cullen is a prize-winning Pulitzer Prize. Yeah, yeah Pulitzer, Pulitzer Prize. Prize. Well, it's not for you. Yes. <laughs> just work in uh, Storm Lake, Iowa. And, yes. and, uh, the Pulitzer Prize was more for his work with uh, water quality and the Des Moines Waterworks and some other journalism actions. But he has also written a very interesting book on sort of the challenge experienced over the years because of the very large uh, minority population, or actually majority population, Hispanics because of their uh, meat packing meat and other packing. industries and. Uh, so it's a real interesting situation, actually, that he's, he's written on. Uh, second one, uh, probably even a uh, higher priority, and I'll uh, Jeff probably speak a little more, is uh, at our last uh, Friends Board meeting, we did make a commitment of $200,000 towards the uh, Enhancement to Library Youth Areas project that's uh, being uh, pushed forward. And uh, so we're very uh, pleased to be able to make that commitment to up to $200,000, at least at this point in time, to that project. Uh, third item I've got, the uh, Friends will be sponsoring a, a uh, a vehicle, if you will, a trunk retreat at Fairmount uh, next week. And always look forward to that. Actually, a very enjoyable time. 
Uh, we did fund the food for the main library open house uh, the other couple weeks back, and that was quite successful. And then the last thing I'd like to mention, we have been, and I've been promoting working on development of actually, if you will, an annual budget for the friends. They haven't always been real good about kind of trying to project outward income and expenditures. It's kind of interesting when you look at it, like a six-year uh, average time frame that the friends have had a, expenditures on a six-year basis of about 300000 and income of about 400000 uh, So uh, it's able to participate in funding some of these even larger maybe uh, uh, activities. Now, of course, a lot of those funds are dedicated funds for certain uh, activities that just we don't totally control in a sense, but uh, that's been a major project. So uh, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Next item under communications and reports are committee reports. Tom, anything invited? Well, I did want to you know, mention that on the budget recap, you know, we're a quarter of the way through the year. Um, it appeared like some of the expenses were just a slightly above that. Um, obviously, there may be a certain amount of timing issues on some things. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't think there's any huge alarm on that. It's just, a, like I say, a, you know, timing issues on when things are spent. So, and I did want to say thank you to the friends for uh, the uh, refresh refreshments at the uh, open house. They were, you know, very nice. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Don. Um, Personnel, uh, Vanda wasn't sure how soon she'd be able to join us, but um, so just in case she's not able to join us, um, <clears throat> she asked me to mention that, uh, to remind you that although we just did Jeff's six month evaluation, um, we'll be doing his annual evaluation in November. And um, we will only be using the board surveys for this evaluation. And uh, she intends to send the surveys out on uh, October 31st, and we'll be requesting them back by the 7th of November. Next item under committee reports is efficacy. Um, Mika, anything for us? Uh, it's not the report, Steve, but uh, I just had one question uh, that I was asked, and Jeff, you might, if I might ask, is um, people, I mean, two friends who said they love it, that we have that automatic renewal of items. And when the item gets renewed, the customer, the patron, gets an email back, you know, saying, and, and there's a subject line in the email. But the subject line, I mean, one of them said, not both of them, one of them said, the subject line says something to the effect, and I should have seen it myself properly, reminder or reminder from customer service library, something like this. But it, so they were suggesting, they were suggesting, is it possible if it's an automated process uh, to have something positive? Because it's, it's a great thing that the library is doing, renewing books automatically at the same time. So is it possible if the subject line of that email be automated, something, you know, the example was, uh, your library items have been renewed or something like that. Yep, yeah, so, we'll, check, we'll definitely check into a one, complication with the system right. is that it will, let's say you have 10 items are checked out, it will attempt to renew all the items. If some are ineligible or unsuccessful, mm. then that's when it runs into complications. So we might be able to successfully renew eight of the items, but two might still need to be renewed. So we'll look at that subject line and see if we can make some modifications to make it a little bit more friendly or more applicable because it has to hit all those situations. Of course, that's, that's yeah. interesting. Thank you. I mean, that's really interesting to, uh, I will make a note of that. To that the, I just wanted to share this, that I listened to the Haunted Tales of Davenport. Uh, it's the podcast. And I think, uh, I forget, is, is the person named Amy? Yes. Amy Dris Driscoll. Mm -hmm. Amy Driscoll uh, gave a talk. She's an archivist here. And uh, it's online, so if anybody wants to listen, uh, she's archivist here from the it's a city the, podcast it's a city yeah. podcast mm -hmm. and uh, it's there online and it, the, it's also there on my social media page so spooky tales from Davenport is what she talked about so just uh, just wanted to share thank you 
can I just there, there was also a presentation at German American Heritage Center last Sunday kind of in that vein anyhow I don't right. know, I different think, person I think it's a PUCI it really fair last last week yeah. I think that was it I think the PUC archives fair which they gave that presentation so yeah you were right yeah. so just wanted to share that's it <laughs> Yeah, there's just a couple of items that I wanted to spotlight in addition to the report or at least a little bit of a calling out. Uh, one of them is obviously to make sure that I publicly acknowledge yet again the great work that Amber Carlson and Quinn O'Brien were able to, to do and they were rewarded. Um, with uh, their awards, they were presented with those at the Iowa Library Association Conference uh, last week, which was really great. Mm -hmm. So I love that representation for Gavin Porter, what they were able to accomplish, the great things they've been able to do. And then also Brittany Peacock, our Community Outreach and Marketing Supervisor, for her role this upcoming year as president of the National Association of uh, Outreach Services, which is really great. Uh, the other thing is the open house that was on the 30th it was a really great success and we're really thankful to the friends for helping assist with that. We had about 50 individuals that had attended we heard a lot of really positive feedback from that. So we're really thankful for that. And then in the email I sent yesterday about the community survey, I would encourage you if you are a Davenport resident um, to make sure you complete that, uh, share it with your friends and family if, um, and encourage them to complete that form as well so we can get some good feedback for the library and for the city overall as well. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions if it has any, anything else in the report. Questions or comments? Chef, people have talked like beautifully about the presentation that happened. I, I regret I was not there at Panama. I mean, it has just been so overwhelmingly uh, beautiful that you feel so proud to be a part of you know, what you all do and these two, you know, and they really have. Been they praised how Quinn, what Quinn has done, and you know how the community has benefited in every way. And uh, it was not just one of the individuals who I think was there at the same seat as you all were at ILA, but uh, many others got in touch, uh, knowing my affiliation with you all. And it was just tremendous. So thank you to you all and Quinn uh, for what she does. Yeah, they're doing a, a great job. <laughs> yes. Okay. Council liaison, Marion? Well, it's gotten quieter at council lately, and <laughs> shorter, too. <laughs> yeah. 23 minute meeting. Wow. <laughs> the first week after all the big discussions. So, um, in any case, so um, yeah, so the, um, as you are um, probably aware, the um, discussion and vote on the conversion or the return of one ways back to original two ways um, did pass. It was a, a tie um, and it was um, decided by the mayor who voted for it. Um, the conversion uh, timing on this, uh, just so you know, um, there's been, it'll, it will probably, will probably really not start seeing the actual conversion happen until 2024. Um, there has to so what will uh, what will happen first is there there's there are two projects there's the telegraph to Harrison um, uh, Scribble Drive so two different projects but obviously you know impact the same street they impact the same street. so. Um, likely be uh, the resurfacing will happen um, and then the conversion will come after that and because of the you know Iowa weather and everything else uh, they will next year they will be they will be letting they will be doing final engineering plans and things like that so it will take a while so you probably will not um, will not really be see the true conversion happen until 2024 you may start to see um, there were some discussions completely unrelated to this about um, there's a, a stoplight at on, um, there's a stoplight on Second Street somewhere that people have been asking why is it there uh, right now and so um, uh, that you may see some of that will probably start enforcing again doesn't impact the library but you may see it impact streets 
um, things that you know people are not supposed to be unloading trucks in the middle of the street. They do right now because there's three lanes. So we're probably going to start um, enforcing some of that um, ahead of time to get people and businesses used to that. Um, and um, they may start looking at putting some loading areas and those kind of things in place so that, again, it's not all, everything is happening at once. But you will not see, will not be one part converted and then another part converted. That will all happen at once. Um, but it will come at the end of the process rather than early in the process. Um, so, um, and that's about the best moving target I can give you right now. <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of impact for the library, again, the main thing is going to be what we do with our book drop. Right. And then also what uh, plays out with the intersection directly outside of our area and how that kind of comes to fruition. Right. And obviously staff and uh, patrons walking across the street right. will most likely be encouraged to look to look two ways. Or look two ways the way across the street. Yeah. 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 To the intersection instead of illegally jaywalking. Will there be road closures during that? Oh version. my goodness, it's going to be such a mess on the West End. <laughs> what we're doing, uh, 3rd and 4th Street, because it is a major resurfacing and curbs, and it's a major, it's not just let's put a little. What's one more? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's why um, in years, in previous years, uh, uh, Division was resurfaced, Marquette was resurfaced in preparation for this program, because we didn't want that going on while this was all going. So, of course, River Drive, 2nd Street, um, you know, it's, there's, unless there's work being done, there could be work done on those, um, but um, there's no big plan for big resurfacing. So there's still certainly ways, but I'm sure it will be, um, I think, honestly, the most, the toughest one's going to be the resurfacing project because it is so big and so long and impacts such a, you know, um, a long stretch, so I think that's probably the one that's going to be more kind of headache for people. Um, but hopefully we can, you know, I'm sure, I mean, we always do make it through, so it'll be our 53rd Street, to, I'm sure we'll hear a lot about it. Um, so, and, 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 it, and this is all subject to change, of course. Uh, the other thing, um, um, this is no not an update, but um, uh, the Canadian Pacific um, um, uh, merger, the potential merger, I believe the date now for uh, the decision, which is not when it would start, um, is about January. I may be wrong about that, um, but that's uh, that's what I've heard. The extended the comment period through um, part of October, and then um, and then uh, and I think at that point it was a December date, but now it's January. So we will just wait and see. We will wait and see. We don't know um, what's um, what's going to be happening there. Um, one of the things that happened in um, September, and it was at the end of September, so this hadn't been reported to you guys, but the um, uh, the, the city Iowa is off was offering a destination Iowa grant grant opportunity, which was um, very focused on not neighborhoods, not streets. But on you know downtown you know economic redevelopment and tourism, so our main, we felt like that our Main Street landing, which we had put dollars toward um, already, was kind of an ideal thing. It kind of it was kind of right in the sweet spot. It had to be a very concentrated area. It couldn't be spread all over the riverfront. They wanted something very concentrated. So at the end of the day, it was um, to um, it, and, and it's what we were able to do was take um, ARPA funding, which is for sure, Canadian, some of the Canadian Pacific dollars, which is certainly not for sure, but probably is for sure in terms of it's probably going to happen, I think, um, and put those together to get another. So that was 14 million to get another six million for uh, from the state of Iowa to do enhanced and to be able to finish off more of Main Street landing area, which was. When we decided to do Main Street Landing, the council was like, so staff, go find money. Um, so uh, we've managed all of this money is not coming out of the regular capital budget. So it doesn't take away from other things that we fund in the city. 
Um, now, if, if for some reason Canadian Pacific doesn't go through, we don't get Destination Iowa, you know, then we roll back. Uh, but part of that, part of, part of using Canadian Pacific money is, is another very large access point into the riverfront, which is certainly access, you know, if you're thinking about Canadian Pacific, it's pretty critical. Um, and so that's one of the one of the elements of that. Um, uh, so um, voted on it was right at the very end of September. So you guys haven't heard about that. The other piece of this was that the Figgy joined in. They are and they went out and raised a tremendous amount of money. So this is very exciting for the downtown. I think um, they will be if again successful. Um, we get the they will get the match from Destination Iowa. And this is. Uh, the lighting of the Figgy, which is not just lights, <laughs> it is uh, pretty fantastic. Um, um, uh, an artist who has done this on the Golden Gate Bridge. There's, you know, libraries, you know, um, uh, art museums, and so it's a very. Um, uh, Bill, I think his name is uh, Bill, Bill Real, um, and so um, that's what they are funding. And it was actually something that was. Um, envisioned by the architect when the thing, when the food was built. Um, so um, and destination Iowa because it was in that corridor really tight and then the state came and kind of visited and really kind of liked these concepts. So we'll keep up image class and see about that. So that's kind of new since we last met. Um, and so then uh, the last thing is the uh, Halloween parade is downtown. It is October 30th. It is back in daylight. It was, I guess, terrifying last year. Although, I mean, the last one I had a lot of fun, but I got left behind and had to run up the street by myself. <laughs> it was at night and the children just apparently swarmed. It was very scary. So the city said, we're going back to daylight. <laughs> so, so anyway, that will be 2 o'clock on October 30th. Okay, so and probably the library is involved some way, but I'm, yes. uh, yep. I'm sure there's something here. Because the bow will be in the parade. Yeah. Okay, great. So, Thank you very much. That's everything. Uh, okay. Moving along, next item is old business. <clears throat> um, the item, only item under old business is motion to approve the filming and recording policy. Uh, we discussed that at the last meeting. Um, there has been one change to that involving uh, areas that filming is not allowed. Can you address those, please, um, Jeff? So uh, this it, this policy was presented to the board last month, uh, and there has been one uh, minor change to that where we eliminated the phrase saying rooms reserved for nursing and child care areas uh, because we don't have a room reserved for nursing, and there is no, um, legally we cannot uh, prohibit any kind of recording in a child care area. There's not also not a child care area. So this just didn't make sense on several levels. Uh, and then I did get a uh, word back from the city attorney yesterday afternoon. Good. So he said the policy looks fine as is, and he recommended um, one other change to the next section, and that is where it says taking photographs or videos in areas reserved for staff use only is also prohibited. Persons taking photographs and videos shall not. And then number one, compromise a patron's right to privacy. And then he added, including but not limited to documenting or capturing what book, item, or material the patron is engaged with. And then under two, harass, intimidate, or threaten a patron or staff member or otherwise interfere with the staff member's ability to perform their duties. So there were two additional suggestions to that section. Otherwise, everything looks good from their perspective. Okay. Would you hit those changes one more time, please? Yep. So including but not limited to documenting or capturing what book, item, or material the patron is engaged with. And then under the second, harass, intimidate, or threaten a patron or staff member, or otherwise interfere with the staff member's ability to perform their duties. <clears throat> and library staff's recommendation would be to Pass this policy. Thank you. Apologize, but we got a little out of sequence there. Should have called for a motion to approve the policy. Um, but uh, 
I guess good to know that those changes are there. So um, we have a motion to approve the filming and photography policy with the amendments, with the uh, additional changes that uh, Jeff just so moved. Covered. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Tom. Okay, and a motion and second to approve the <clears throat> filming and recording policy. And um, any further discussion? Hearing and, say, hearing and seeing not a call for the vote. Sylvia? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Judy? Yes. Thank you. Joe? Yes. Thank you. Tom? Yes. Thank you. Craig? Yes. Thank you. And um, who has joined us? Hi, Laura Guinness is here on the Sorry, everyone. And yes, I vote to approve the filming and photography policy. Much more. Hi, everyone. Hi. And one vote is yes, the motion is yes. yes. Okay, that's good. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You're at the top of the list again. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Okay. Um, Next item on the agenda, new business. Um, first item there is a motion to designate bequest funds to the Enhanced Early Learning Literacy Spaces Project. Um, you may recall, um, Lexi gave us a presentation on those enhancements. And um, Jeff, we included a memo uh, about the The bequest funds from Rochelle Murray. Um, we have a motion to approve the designated to designate the bequest bequest of funds to the Enhanced Early Literacy Spaces Project. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, Tom. Uh, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Joe. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Just one thing to yes. again reiterate on this is uh, the friends have generously offered two hundred thousand dollars for this project. Yes. With the existing two hundred and fifty-eight thousand dollars for the total bequest, we're already at nearly a half a million dollars. And then uh, through the work of others such as Tracy for applying for an RDA grant, which Lexi then did a presentation to their board last week on, we're hopeful that we're going to get another substantial amount from that alone. Uh, and then tied into everything else we can do with funding, we're hoping to um, to continue to build upon that success so that we can make that space a really uh, a really great uh, location. And we're incredibly thankful for um, the for Michelle Murray for not only her years of service at, for the library and for the community, but then for her to be able to um, bequest this large amount to make a really transformative uh, appearance for the library that's long lasting. And we're really really thankful for that opportunity. Will the space be named for her? It already is at Maine. There is a uh, there is a plaque up for in Maine for for her, uh, and we'll look at uh, naming opportunities uh, depending on uh, what we receive in funding for the other two locations as well. Okay. Any other questions? Discussion? Okay. Hearing none, call for the vote on the motion to designate bequest funds to the enhanced early literacy spaces project. Uh, Laura. Laura? I, I heard my name, but I didn't hear. Are you asking if anyone has questions of me specifically? Or, oh, no. I'm to vote. I'm calling for the vote on the uh, motion. Aye, yes, yes. Okay. I'm good with that. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, Judy? Yes. Joe? Yes. Tom? Yes. Craig? Yes. Malavika? Yes. <laughs> and Sylvia? Yes. And, and Amanda. 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 I'll add a yes. <laughs> yes, thank you. Almost forgot. I was trying. Um, okay. Um, and just at this point, I want to mention uh, uh, to Amanda that I didn't relay your information about the director's. Um, 
evaluation. Okay. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, okay, moving along under new business. Next item is motion to approve closing the library facilities to the public on April 27th, 2023 for the annual staff and service meeting. We have a motion in that regard. I still move, Steve. Okay. Thank you, Valvika. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Tom. I have a motion and a second to approve closing the library facilities to the public on April 27th, 2023 for the annual staff and service training. Um, is there any discussion? Okay. Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Judy? Yes. Joe? Yes. Tom? Yes. Craig? Yes. Malavika? Yes. Sylvia? Yes. Thank you. Amanda? Yes. Thank you. Laura? Aye. Yes. Thank you. And my own vote is yes. The motion carries. Um, next item is President's comments. Um, this is going to end up being kind of echoing uh, things that others have said, but um, uh, it was a, I did attend the Iowa Library Association conference uh, last Thursday and Friday, and it was uh, very nice to have um, Tony Bryan and um, Amanda Carlson both got um, awards from the ILA for their work. That was very nice. And uh, there were quite a few um, good sessions there and got to talk to some other people. There were uh, more trustees there. I think I saw six or eight uh, at the previous meeting. I was the only trustee in attendance. So at least I had some people to, to confer with. Um, I did meet um, a um, library trustee from Storm Lake, <laughs> where Mr. Cullen is coming from. So I thought that was interesting when I saw where he was from. So anyway, um, that's really all I have to say. So we'll uh, carry on from there and uh, turn the floor over to Emily Simhau, the uh, Youth Services Supervisor for uh, some training on Youth Services. Yeah. Are you going to be my slide clicker? I can do that. I can come do it. Yeah. All right. Should we sit here? This is weird, right? <laughs> I don't like talking to adults. Uh, I only like talking to kids. So I'll do my best. Um, we can start throwing things or something. <laughs> I'd be really comfortable with that. Um, <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, uh, um, as Steve said, I'm Emily Sipp. I'm the Youth Services Supervisor. Um, and today I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about um, our department, what we do. Um, some things we have coming up, um, and just kind of share what we've got going up. Go for it, Casey. Go. All right. Um, so our mission, our mi overall mission, is to empower exploration, um, and we do that through promoting literacy um, and learning um, by we celebrate reading by introducing readers to new books and facilitating conversation about books, encouraging reading across all age groups, um, including family reading. Um, and support early literacy and lifelong learning. Um, and we also work to engage our activities um, in open gathering spaces, offer entertaining and enriching programming um, that meets the needs and interests of our diverse population, and um, reach out to the community to provide services outside the library as well as spread library awareness. Next. I'll give $5 to anyone who can spot what's wrong with this picture. Um, <laughs> we do not have a current staff photo, so you'll notice that Joe, our newest uh, youth services assistant, um, has been photoshopped on Angie's body. Um, so, um, uh, we'll get a, we'll get a He does. He actually fooled his wife for a second. She was like, when did that picture happen? And he's like, that's not my body. Um, <laughs> it's not good Photoshop, but it's that was from our Frozen party a couple years ago. Um, we have six full-time staff, including one supervisor, me, um, two librarians, Christy and Amber. So those are the two people on the right side of the photo. 
um, two library assistants, that's Holly and Joe, um, and one early literacy uh, coordinator, which is grant funded through December 2024. Um, she will be starting, our previous one resigned, so our, our uh, new um, early literacy coordinator, um, Isabel Noble, will be starting November 1st. So we're really excited to have her join us. She is coming to us from uh, PV Junior High. Um, Griffin's teacher. Yes, she's a teacher. What? She's Griffin's teacher. Oh, yeah, I'm stealing her. her. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so she's finishing out the quarter. Um, I'm really excited. She has, despite being currently a uh, family consumer science teacher, um, you probably don't know that family consumer science teachers have to have a pretty strong background and take extra classes in early literacy. Um, yeah, because they teach like about child development um, and things like that. So she's got a strong background in early literacy. She's done a lot of really cool projects at her school. Um, I don't know if Griffin did this. Um, they she they learned about all the developmental stages and then had to design a toy um, for a particular age group and then they got to give those toys to um, the group. She's done a lot of really cool stuff. I'm really excited. Um, she's She's going to bring our age average down. She's young. <laughs> <laughs> we're all about the same age. Um, so we're really excited to have her starting with us soon. Um, youth services responsibilities. So we are in charge of collection development for most of the children's and YA areas of the library collection. I'm not going to bore you by reading all of those areas off. It's in your board packet. Um, there are a couple that we have passed off to people, uh, like Lexi does. Uh, play away or what do you do now? I gave uh, it away and I forgot. <laughs> audio books. Audio books and the audio play books launch pads. And play away launch pads. Um, and a couple of other things like that that we've passed on. It's, it's a lot of selection areas and a large um, amount of budget and it's hard to manage with just three of us doing all of that um, selection and, and management. So, But we still do most of it. Um, we also create displays for the library that um, support the programming that we have going on or general themes that we've got going on. So we had our Hispanic Heritage Month reading challenge, so we did a Hispanic Heritage Month display. Um, we make displays for summer reading um, and just other, you know, seasonal kinds of things. Um, right now, I think we have a, like, creepy, crawly display up. Um, we try to stay away from specific holidays, but um, still do seasonal things. Um, a big portion of our work is programming. Uh, we plan those quarterly and about four months in advance. Um, and we do programming for ages zero to 19, so it's a big range. Um, and we also do school outreach. So while we do have an outreach department, we, also, we take a piece of that because it's such a big job. Um, and we do any outreach that is, um, takes place in a school or um, is like a school trip we do those things. So things like that include um, our teen book groups, Battle of the Books, um, GLOW stands for Grade Level Outreach in, in Education. I don't know what it is. I heard you know something. It's a down for schools acronym. Um, <laughs> we do those for first graders um, every year. Uh, family nights. I have one of those on Friday night. I'm doing a Trunk Retreat and Fall Fest at Jackson, um, and we also do promotion of summer reading. Next. Um, so I wanted to, sh the next few slides are just pictures, because I wanted to show you um, some of the things that we do. So um, one of the, our, our programs are broken down in a few categories, early literacy, uh, grade school, teen, and um, kits or passive programs. Um, so our early literacy programs, one big aspect of that is our 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten program, um, which I think I have a stat about later in the presentation. Um, many of our early literacy programs are story times. Um, we currently offer story times for babies, toddlers, and preschools, as well as or preschoolers, as well as various special or themed story times, like um, in the past, we've had a night owl story time or a milk and cookies after school story time we have going right now. Um, prior to the addition of our early literacy coordinator, I had started offering early literacy focused parent education classes. Um, so like something where parents would come with, without their children 
um, and create some sort of manipulative or activity that they could use with their child at home. Um, so an example of that is this busy binder that's up um, in the corner there. Um, that's just one page of it. So they were able to go home with a binder um, that their child could use to do basic math and counting activities, um, word building, things like that. Um, and then down in the other corner um, is a quiet book uh, program that I offered um, where they built a book, they came, built a book out of felt um, where there were little different activities that um, they had all the templates there um, and they could build the book. That one is a matching activity with a washer um, and a clothesline. So the socks go in the washer, you pull them out and match up the pairs. Um, <laughs> there were a bunch of counting things, fun activities like that. Um, I passed them on to our early literacy coordinator when she started, it didn't quite go as I hoped, um, but I'm looking forward to our new early literacy coordinator taking that back over and um, kind of expanding on those. Um, you know, as I said, she's a teacher and has a strong background in early literacy, and I think she's going to really be able to take off with those. Um, we've heard that it's, and it makes sense, it's difficult for parents sometimes to get to those programs without their kids. So we're looking at um, potentially offering some parallel programming where in half of the room, we'd be doing the activity with the parent, and then on the other half of the room, we'd be having a play group or um, a story time, something to keep the kids busy on the other side of the room. So I'm excited about all of the things that should be coming up um, with our early literacy programming. Casey just knew I was ready. Oh, Good job. <laughs> um, grade school. Grade school programming makes up um, a really large chunk of our programming. Um, they vary pretty widely from like themed celebrations like um, our unicorn party, which is um, up there somewhere, um, to like craft programs or play opportunities and guest presenters, book clubs all kinds of things. Um, we also do quite a bit of school outreach for this age, including um, our first grade glow trips, um, elementary battle of the books, and family nights. Um, one program that's coming back in the winter that I'm really excited about is um, our Make Believe Mondays program. It's my program, so I'm excited about it. Um, <laughs> so it's an open-ended play program um, that's themed. So one week, we have a coffee shop where the kids can pretend to be baristas. Or um, the next week, we had a pizza shop. Holly is so talented and built that pizza oven um, <laughs> oh, with the pizza peel. And so they got to, we got cardboard rounds and they got to build a pizza, put the sauce on and all the toppings. Um, we have pizza boxes donated for Happy Joe's. Um, and then they, the parents are really great at playing with them. It's a good opportunity for them to engage with their child. Um, and that's an after school program. I also want to bring back Tape Town, which is right below that pizza oven picture, uh, where you make like a big town with roads out of tape on the floor, and kids would fill out a thing to rent a car and um, <laughs> drive around to different towns where we had books that went along with whatever was there. So if it was um, the car dealership where they rented their car, then there were books about cars there, or if it, then they drive over to, oh gosh, it's so long ago, I don't remember what we had. Um, like a, a playground area or a park, and we have books on, on those areas. Um, so I want to do that one again too. Soon. Um, we also offer incentives for our first graders who return from our on the glow trips. So on their first return visit, they get a owl backpack that's very adorable. Um, if they return again, they get a button and they get to sign the banner that you see Amber holding um, there, and we have one at each location. And on their th third return visit, they get entered into a raffle um, for a QC family staycation. So, um, because three return visits in a short period of time demonstrates a family commitment to literacy, so we wanted to give a, um, a prize that was for the whole family. So this was our winner this year. Um, they got, uh, we had a hotel stay donated from a local hotel with pool, because that's important if you're <laughs> in first grade. Um, and uh, so they get a one night hotel stay for a family of four. Um, they got a gift card to Red Robin, uh, Cold Stone, 
uh, gift card to Elevate Trampoline Park and a uh, gift card to Books A Million. Um, and all of the, the hotel was in that area too, so it was all close. Um, and he was very excited. He's super adorable. And we were excited that he won. <laughs> all right. Um, our teen programs. So Amber, our award-winning teen librarian, um, I just start calling us an award-winning department all the time. <laughs> so Jeff, you, Lexi, you'll hear me say that a lot. Um, so Amber does the bulk of our teen programming, um, although Joe, who's new to our department as of uh, the end of August, um, he's been assisting since he joined. Um, Amber does monthly book groups at many of the middle and high schools. So that little collage of pictures on the left um, are all from book groups. Um, and they're really successful. Um, Lexi started them with me when I was a librarian at SMART. Um, and they've continued and really grown to other schools since then. Um, this month, SMART's book club. Next month, they're going to have to split into two groups because they have 50 kids at their last one. Um, yeah. So at book groups, um, Amber brings a bunch of books for the students to check out their, our books to check out there at their school library. Um, she takes requests and caters each month's offerings to the needs and interests of those particular students. Um, she brings a craft for the group to do while they chat about whatever they're reading. Um, and then Amber also does book talks. It's really fun. It was the best day of my month, every month, when I was um, a, a teacher librarian. Um, Teen Advisory Board, which I know you guys have already heard about, um, is really growing lately. Um, the, the group is the biggest that I've seen it since um, I started almost four years ago. Um, right now we're in the middle of Teen Tober, which um, is a YALSA, the Young Adult Library, Services Association, um, a subdivision of ALA. Um, it includes a teen reading challenge competition among the area libraries, as well as um, a teen video contest. Um, and they've added an art and writing contest this year. Um, and then the teen video contest culminates with a red carpet screening of all the video entries at the Putnam. Um, so Amber's been working really hard on that. We also brought back teen gaming this fall, which has been on um, hiatus since the pandemic. Um, it runs concurrently with TikTok Club, which is my favorite club. If you're following our TikTok, um, the teens make the most hysterical TikToks. They're obsessed with Kermit for some reason, and they keep putting our Kermit puppets in it in the videos. Um, and we're also adding an anime club. Joe is going to do that. Next. Um, and these are just some of our kits and passive programs. We don't do as many of these as we used to. Um, during the heart of the pandemic. But um, we do have one very large kit program coming up. Um, it's our third annual Kit Miss, 12 Days of Kit Miss program, um, where I lose my mind and decide it's a good idea to make a kit that has 12 crafts in one box. Um, there's two different, <laughs> the last two years are up there. Um, we make 100 of them, because I'm crazy. Um, and it's really popular. They Registration fills in like 20 minutes every time. Um, and then we do a Zoom where the kids all do um, the last craft together and then they do like a show and tell of all the things they've made throughout. It's really fun. Um, and then I forget how much work it is over the course of the year and I decide to do it again. <laughs> um, we're also bringing Out of the Blocks back soon, which is our Lego program where kids get a box of random Legos and then they're challenged to build something on top of the box and then bring it back in for display. Um, up there we've also got um, one of our, that bird one is a collaboration we did with Nahant um, where they make hits with us. Um, we've got our, our tiny art, what did I call that? Tiny, tiny family art. Bus. There's tiny family art in it, but mini masterpieces is the other one um, where we made a tiny gallery of oh. like three by three. <laughs> Um, <laughs> three by three canvases. Um, I think we're going to do that one again this spring too. Um, and then those are some pictures on the right side from uh, our mermaid party, which was supposed to be an in-person party, and then the pandemic happened. Um, and we did it as a kit later on, and um, all these people sent us pictures of their kids um, enjoying our Zoom um, event and doing all of the crafts. 
was really fun. Um, and then we also do passive programs within the library, like scavenger hunts and um, things like that. And some statistics. So our 1,000 books before kindergarten program, um, right now we have, as of like 20 minutes ago, longer than that, like an hour ago, um, we have 1,109 children who have registered for the program since we relaunched it in the spring of 2021. Um, and participants so far have read 160,429 books. Um, yeah, it's really successful and, um, and I'm excited for our new early literacy coordinator to be here and, and really continue growing that. I would really love to see sign up of, for that program happening at um, birthing classes. And I think we can really grow the program that way. We just haven't been able to make it work yet. Um, this year, so far in 2022, we have offered 394 programs. Um, and I've talked about the range of that. And we've also facilitated or participated in 65 programs at local schools and organizations, mostly schools. Um, and then I'm sure you probably already heard about their summer reading stats, but I'm really proud of them, so I'm showing them again. Um, <laughs> so these, this is as far back as I have stats for summer reading. Um, but this year's, our, our goal was um, a 25% increase. Um, so 1,715 was our goal. Um, and we ended up with 2,233, which was a 63% increase over 2021, and a 77% increase over our pre-COVID numbers. I think Beanstack has had a big impact on participation rates, um, but we've also had really great um, buy-in from the schools. Um, I think Jeff has talked to you about, maybe, um, I thought I read it somewhere, that they, uh, they used our theme um, in their summer learning sites um, and did a lot of our activities and logged as a group, um, and that has really helped to grow those numbers. Um, This year's public school winner, we just presented their trophies last Wednesday, um, was Hayes Elementary. Um, they had 36% of their students participating, um, and they beat their closest competitor by 13%, which is really great um, for them, not, not the one who lost. Um, and this year's private school winner was Trinity Lutheran, and they had 21% of their students participating. Um, both schools received um, a trophy and $1,000 in new books for their school library. Um, oh, our, for our Glow Trips, they also received $1,000 in books for their library, the school with the highest return rate, which was Eisenhower this year. Oh, no. All right, last slide. Um, some things we've got going on right now. This is another from Make Believe Monday. I love this picture a lot. Um, Sticky is mom's coffee order. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he was so sweet. Oh, the tiny I know. <laughs> it's adorable. You should come. You should stop by. When we start this up in January, you should come to Make Believe Monday. It's so cute. Um, we are working on getting our student library card program off the ground. Um, if we've hit a little bit of a delay, the district was without email for a long time, and then um, the coordinator was, was sick, um, and so it's okay. Um, and so I missed a couple of meetings with her, but um, the goal of the program is that Davenport School students would automatically receive a library card when they register for school. So the parents would be able to opt out if they aren't interested, um, but everybody would automatically get a library card just when, when they register for school. So I'm really excited about that. Um, we're also trying to get started working with Monroe um, to pilot a program where we work more, well, they kind of mirror what we do at the library. So if we had like our Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, reading challenge, they would do pair, like complementary programming at school um, to go along with that and ad advertise our programs, promote them, um, and do things to go along with our themes and the programs that we do throughout the year. And then if that goes well, then they are interested in expanding that um, to all the schools. Um, I was really clear with them that I want to make sure that we're not duplicating or replacing any of our programming, but um, complementing it. So, um, and then we're planning our glow trips for um, our first graders for this year. Um, we are going to instead of having them come to the library this year, um, we're going to do what we did last year, um, but tweak it a little bit. Um, so 
we'll go to them with the OWL, so it'll be a collaboration with Outreach. We'll go to the school with um, the OWL, they'll get to come out and check out. We'll go in and do a story time for them there. We'll do a craft um, and then um, they'll have an opportunity to earn those incentives for their return visits. And that's all I got. <laughs> You did a good job. I did it, yeah. Wow, I just thought the library was a pretty neat place before I knew all this was. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool stuff. Cool stuff. <laughs> Any questions or comments? Emily, thank you so very much to what you shared. You, you, you did say that you should sometimes have a problem with, you know, with parents. We have, I'm, I'm not using the right phrase here. But you have a programming for parents who can help them with the folders and things like that. Yeah. Because, you know, I can understand the child care and all that. Yeah, and child stuff. care is definitely Child concerned. care and all that kind of stuff. Would, I mean, I don't know. You must have tried this already. But if you can help uh, having uh, going into PTA meetings, especially That's a good idea. elementary yeah. is school time. And mm -hmm. if, 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 and I know that you have. Done for connections, yep. school connections. But if you need any help, I'd be glad to Thank you. help you with, you know, because they like to have guests. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the meetings, the meetings run from one hour to one and a half hour. And quite a few places now, we have started Kivani students, Kivanis, Kivanis, yes, Kivanis, Kivani students from colleges as their caregivers mm -hmm. in the school, so they get their volunteer hours and the parent get their own time. Yeah. So if, yeah. If that's something you want, if you do think, and I could be of any help, I'd be glad to. Thank you. Yeah, and we've really built our PTA partnerships up recently. Right. Um, I think we got in with a couple of them, yeah. and the others have started to hear, and so we're getting more calls, you know, like this one from Jackson to come, um, you know, have a table or a trunk in this case at uh, <laughs> their, their trunk or treat event. Um, yeah, so it's really yeah. exciting. Thank you for everything. <laughs> it's Steve, I'd just like to reiterate that, and I've said this at the meeting before, that the Friends Group, we have made it quite clear that our number one priority is supporting early literacy mm -hmm. programs, and if funding capabilities ever came to push to shove, that would continue to be the case, so I just want to reiterate that. that yeah, and we're so, so appreciative. Anything we can do to help in that, even more so after, I don't forget that, Friends meeting not too long ago, they showed a slide about Davenport Public Schools, yes. and it was still like under 60% were reading at the level they're supposed to be reading at it's third grade bad. or something. So, yeah. whatever we do can't hurt that number. That's not sure. Hopefully, help. Appreciate that. Thank you, so I did, the big thank you for this whole idea of this would really tell us what's going on here. Tell us what's going on here. So, it's just it's great. Thank you so much, all of you. I'm just no, bamboozled for all that. <laughs> so thank you. We're very tired. But. <laughs> okay. So one thing to definitely um, pass on for um, to share about Emily is that one of the things that she's been able to do really great is build on the connections with the schools in particular that Lexi and her team had done prior and really grow that and build those connections coming from the school district really helped with those relationships. Yes. And then she's done a really great job in the last three and a half, almost four years to build upon that. And a testament to that, obviously, is um, summer reading this last year with their summer learning program being modeled almost entirely upon our program, the program that she ran. And then another thing that you probably don't see regularly, because this is a lot of really fun, great things, but the attention to detail that Emily brings as well. An example of that is a oh, no. spreadsheet that she created <laughs> to help identify uh, school boundary areas with poor access to library branches and public transportation. And then she used that sheet to then rank schools from the highest percentage of students at or below the poverty line to the lowest. So she created a, a ranking of one to 27 which then we can use that information to identify the schools most in need and increase the target outreach. Yeah, the, that's the uh, distance to branch and Which is why we picked Monroe, because they're in a real like, dead spot um, exactly. for library services. Um, I don't think any of them are going to third street to, to get to the library or up the hill to Fairmount. Um, 
and they have one of the lowest summer reading participation rates this year, um, and we really want to change that. So well, very Jackson. enthusiastic school. Mm -hmm. well, Jackson. Yeah, Jackson, Same. Jackson too, um, but not actually. Actually, no. Jackson was in second place really? this year, um, but Monroe definitely is a is a school that. I want to bring our services to more. They were very, I, I, they I have were a very soft spot for Monroe. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to go over them the day they welcome kids, and I was very impressed by their staff, by the the leadership, their enthusiasm for what they were doing. I mean, it really it was pretty palpable. Yeah. I mean, there was kids were there with their new shiny backpacks, but quietly over in the library there was. We went through the library and just as we saw everything, and there was there were a stack of backpacks, and it was obviously for kids that hadn't had the shiny new backpack. Yeah, you know that had taken. But it was, you know, we just happened to just, just happened to be off in the corner and not a big hoo ha, you know. So it was, it was a very touching and impressive place, actually. Yeah, so Brittany and I have been talking and working on um, making sure that we get outreach services to those those kids that are at, in those areas when they don't have good transportation to a branch um, and and those scores are, are low too. Sorry, I just interrupted you. That's exactly it. <laughs> but it's, a, it's an example of that next level yeah. uh, that you wouldn't see at perhaps another library uh, and it's just a, a great testament to the work that Emily and her team are doing for the community. And I also have a monthly meeting with the federal and state programs coordinator um, at the school district in Memphis, um, and and she also oversees the teacher librarians. So that's how we're able to to make a lot of those connections. Thank you for all you do. Yeah. You and your yeah. staff. My award-winning sure. team. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry, Ryan. Okay. That's how we like to be referred to from now on. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Yeah. So noted. Okay. So anyway, um, that is taking us to the end of our agenda. And what we have left is a motion to adjourn. If I may, if I may oh, yes, prior so. to, I just wanted to let people know. Um, I belong to both the Catfish Jazz Society and the Mississippi Valley Blues Society, and they're actually having a collaborative contest number six at the Viking. I can't remember the name of the band. Winning conglomeration of music. Uh, yeah. 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 So if you're into either, music, either into jazz or into blues, it's going to be a great combination. It will be Sunday the 6th at the uh, Viking Club, down beat us 2 o'clock. It's $10 per person. You can't get two hours of entertainment for 10 bucks anymore. So uh, if you're available, I will be posting something later, and I'd like to put a poster up if it's possible. I don't know if there's a board here. Or, we do have boards. Yeah, okay. if you get that so I'll bring a poster it. in later. But if you're available, please consider it. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Okay, there's uh, nothing else to come before this forum uh, except a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Tom. A second. So second. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <laughs> and the motion and second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time. Thank you.